Hi, my name's Mike. I manage a flock of about 200 breeding ewes. I've been a producer for over 10 years now, and my ewes have always raised their lambs well. But I've recently noticed a few things that concern me. Some of my best ewes lose condition, even though they're eating well. It usually starts after lambing. They just fade away on me. It's a mystery to me. Even deworming doesn't save them. After talking to my vet, I realized that this could be Yoni's disease. Apparently, Yoni's is caused by millions of microscopic bacteria found in the manure of infected animals. They're called MAP, and they're extremely hard to get rid of. They're even protected from medicine and the sheep's immune system. I've heard Yoni's called an iceberg disease. Can't say that made much sense to me at first. My vet said Yoni's takes years to develop to where the sheep show signs, and the number of sick animals you see is just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, I learned that less than 5% of infected sheep show sickness at any time. The rest are infected, but you can't tell. So one sick sheep means I might have another 15 to 25 infected sheep in the flock. What worries me most is, while these infected sheep look healthy, they could be spreading MAP all over my farm. My vet calls this secret spread, the subclinical phase. He says sheep can be in this stage for years. It's like I'm working in the dark. Just because the symptoms aren't there doesn't mean the infection isn't present. So how did my flock wind up getting yonis? For yonis, the first weeks of a lamb's life were most important. My vet told me that most lambs get infected with MAP by eating or drinking it. They have a manure meal, as my son likes to say, gross. When I think back to how my flock could have come into contact with MAP, I think of some replacement ewe lambs and a young ram I bought at a sale years ago. They looked healthy. I didn't think about asking about the farm they were from or what diseases they might have. Once home, it wasn't long before my new replacements were pregnant. They looked great. At lambing time, I moved them into my lambing pen with the rest of my pregnant ewes. I had no idea they were infected with MAP but they were. And even though I always try to keep things clean, those ewes were spreading MAP all over the pen through their manure, exposing any lambs born in that pen. Lambs can be exposed to MAP in lots of different ways. Newborns sucking on dirty wool, nursing teats contaminated by dirty bedding, eating hay, or even drinking water contaminated with manure. And on top of that, the lambs born from my infected replacements could have consumed MAP shed into the colostrum and milk. And remember that ram I bought? Well, he spread MAP all through the pasture. Apparently, MAP can survive outside on pasture for more than one year. Over time, my replacements lost condition and died. The first one when it was only three years old. But you know, I never had the vet open them up to find out why they died. I only decided to test for yonis when I started to have more animals lose weight. When we found out Yoni's was the culprit, my vet explained ways to manage to prevent MAP from spreading more. It's all about prevention and control, especially during that period when lambs are most susceptible. I've made changes to keep the bedding pack and lambing environment clean. I'm adding lots of fresh, clean bedding and keeping things as dry as possible. I clip long wool from the udder area prior to lambing, which helps prevent those dirty wool tags from being accidentally nursed. For the fields, I make sure that all the manure is composted well before being spread, and I make a point to spread it on crops rather than hay fields or pasture. I also keep the dry lot that I use for the sheep clear of manure by routine scraping, and the manure pile is definitely off limits to the sheep. I also focus on culling ewes that show early signs of yonis and sending them for slaughter only. And I'm not keeping their lambs as replacements, they're for market only. This way I help break the yoni cycle and not gift other producers with this disease. The goal is to help build up a low risk flock and that starts by removing infected animals as soon as possible, keeping the environment clean and routinely monitoring to identify new infections. I've started being more careful about where I purchase breeding animals too. I'm quick to follow up with my veterinarian if ewes unexpectedly lose condition, 
and I test my flock for yonis regularly. But you know, tests don't always come back with the right answer. So I know the only way to be sure is having my vet do an on-farm post-mortem of any animals that die of an unknown reason. My vet said this is crucial for a good flock health program. I also think it's important to keep equipment used to handle sick animals separate from equipment used to handle my healthy animals. It's just good practice. And my family and I handle our sick animals last, so we can't transfer something from our sick sheep over to our healthy ones. I now know that lambs mainly get infected with yonis when they have a manure meal with MAP in it. So making sure young stock don't come into contact with manure is key, not just for yonis, but for many sheep diseases. This is what I did on my farm. For you, I'd say talk to your vet and work on ways to deal with yonis on your farm. You'll see shutting the door on MAP and yonis all starts with reducing the risk of introduction and managing the spread through good lambing area cleanliness and management. And once you understand how it works, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs>